Let's pray. Father, I thank you now, Lord, as our hearts are open, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon each and every one of us, that we might see the word in the fullness of the light of the gospel. We thank you that our eyes of our heart are flooded with your light, that we might just draw the spirit and the power that's in thy word into our spirits and in our souls. And when we leave here tonight, that we will know that we've been fed by the precious Holy Spirit as the word has been made alive to us. For it is not the mere word of men, but it is the very word of God. And we give it reverence, we pay attention, and we listen and give you respect. And we thank you now for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The first scripture we want to put on the board tonight is found in uh, 1 Thessalonians. Willie. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It'll be up on the board and we'll read it. Put your eyes on the board and absorb that word. And we also especially thank God continuously for this, that when you receive the message of God, which you heard from us, Paul's talking, you welcomed it. Isn't that amazing? We need to welcome the word of God. He says, you welcomed it, not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God. That's powerful. Look at that scripture on the board. Powerful word. Which is, now notice this, which is, that is the word of God, effectively at work in you. So that's why it's so important to get the Word of God in us, that it can work effectively in us who believe. Notice this, exercising its superhuman power in those who uh, heave to, trust in, and rely on it. That is the Word of God. Now that's powerful. Look how powerful it is to get the Word of God in you. A lot of people have blood pressure problems today, they take a little pill. The pill can stay in the bottle and it will not effectively work in you to do whatever it's supposed to do <laughs> in your bloodstream or in your veins as long as it's in the bottle. But if you take the little pill and get it in you, it will effectively bring your blood pressure down to where it ought to be. How many understands that? Think of the Word of God like that. When you eat that fine meal on Sunday afternoon, how many of you know it effectively works in you? <laughs> and I don't understand all the mechanics. All I know is it provides that which my body needs. But it works effectively in all of us. So look at the Word of God as alive. It's, it's spirit. And that's why we need to pay attention to the teacher when he teaches and preaches. For I am not preaching the mere words of Bob Tilton, but I am preaching the word of God. And it will work as it gets into us. It will work effectively and change us from glory to glory as the Holy Spirit adds his power to it. So we have the Holy Spirit and we have the word of God. Now everybody has their little handouts. And I'm gonna start with the very first. And really what we wanna talk about is who we really are in Christ. Now remember, we are spirit beings. I know we look in the mirror and we say, boy, do I look good. Well, that ain't you, that's your shell. You is in this shell. Your spirit man is what has been born again by the Spirit of God. 
and our inner man is being transformed into the image of the Son of God as we allow the Word of God to work effectively in us. You know, we try to do things, but if you understand the power that's in the Word, the Word will bring you from glory to glory instead of us trying to step here on glory and gain the glory ourselves. The Word of God will do it in you and you will manifest that glory. Can we understand you plant a seed in the ground? Explain it. I don't know. Why don't the roots go up and the stems go down? <laughs> Within that seed, it knows exactly what, it's been programmed by God to know exactly what to do. The roots grow down and draw the nourishment out of the earth. And the plant begins to grow and it bears fruit. It don't have to strain it don't have to grunt. It just bears fruit. That's the manifestation. As we get the word of God in us, it's alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it will do a work as you put your faith into it. Now remember that. There's a scripture over in Hebrews I want us to turn to. It's uh, Hebrews 4.2, I believe it is. Hebrews 4.2, are we there? For indeed we have had the glad tithing, the gospel of God, of Christ, the word, proclaimed to us just as truly as they, that is the Israelites, of old did when the good news of the deliverance from bondage came to them. But, notice this, but the message or the word of God they heard did not benefit them. And we can say this, and I, don't, I am not a mean man, but we can say that today. <laughs> To many of our brothers and sisters, and maybe some of us, I don't know. They go to church. They go home. And they don't even know what the preacher said. Look what it says. It didn't benefit them because it was not mixed with what? With sugar. With what? Faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Which the leaning of the entire personality on God in absolute trust. Now catch that. Absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. By those who heard it, that is, they heard the gospel. Neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who heard and did believe. So check ourselves out today. And make sure that we understand the power of the word. But we have to put our faith and believe in it. Very important. Now let's read our, our pamphlet here. This is one elementary subject that most Christians still don't fully understand. And it is the powerful key to spiritual breakthrough. For countless believers around the globe today, don't believe you're just an old forgiven sinner. Just because some pastor tells you so. Look these things up in the Word of God for yourself and know the truth. For Jesus said clearly that if we continue in the Word, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. Now notice there's a condition to Knowing the truth. And what is the condition? Hmm? If we continue in the word. Everybody say continue in the word. I, I don't know where you're at, but I encourage you every day to spend some time in the word of God. I encourage you to start with Ephesians. First, <clears throat> read the first chapter. <clears throat> And ask God to illuminate and let the spirit of wisdom and revelation 
In fact, everybody pray that prayer right now. Say, Lord, I pray thee that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon me, that the eyes of my heart will be flooded with light. See, you have to depend upon the Holy Spirit to illuminate and make the Word of God alive to us. So important to do that. I know people use faith for a lot of different things, and I'm not saying it's wrong. But I'll tell you one thing, we need to make sure that we mix faith with the Word of God. <coughs> and receive His promises. Now I want you to turn to the last sheet on this, uh, on your pamphlet. That's, that's sheet 13. Now follow me as we move along, because I want us to learn some things. All right, when we don't realize who we are in Christ, our faith will be crippled. We, now let's, 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 let's pin that down. Who are you in Christ? Are you just Mr. Tilton on the block? Mrs. Campbell that lives down the road? <coughs> or are you a child of God, a son of God, born again by the Spirit of the living God, and you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, and you are a partakers of His holiness, and you have eternal life, and you belong to God. You're not a worm in the cabbage patch. You're a child of the living God with power, with authority. Let me say something. You don't have to feel the power, and you don't have to feel authority. Now hear what I'm saying. We, 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 and I like to feel the power. And I felt the power and I felt the authority. That made no difference. God has given us power over all the powers of the enemy. Just know that you got it. See, I got power. I got authority. The devil comes around your camp. Send him down the road. Not this way. But the other way. <laughs> See, you got to know you got power. You got to know you're a child of God. You got to know who you are in Christ. When we know who we are in Christ, that will generate great power. I remember when I first became foreman many years ago out of the air base. And I would be a little uh, cheapest, you know, and I'd come up to one of the guy that was on my crew, and I say, uh, <clears throat> would you mind working on this? <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And then one day, God talked to me and said, now listen, they sense you're scared, you're afraid. You don't do that. You assigned them to the job in a pleasant way and expect them to carry it out. So I begin to change my behavior, and I just use my authority. Mr. Bowles, I want you to take care of this job for me. I appreciate it. Uh, it has a priority uh, two on it, so we need to get it done as quick as you can. I'll check with you later. Just see. You're in authority. And then when you talk to the devil, uh, shoo, shoo. He's been around a long time. You go, Rah! you ever seen a dog? <clears throat> I've seen this. You ever seen these electric fences? I was out on the farm one day, and, and this dog came up, and he, he put his nose to that electric fence. <laughs> and he was gone. That's how the devil's to run from us. We're out on the highway. We come along with our car. This policeman's out there. He don't yell at you and holler at you. Go, 
put his hand out like that. You recognize authority and you obey and you slow your car down and stop. He comes up, asks you some questions. And he said, well, thank you, you can go. The devil recognizes when we know we have authority and he knows we know who we are and he knows that we know that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places and we've been put down here as a representative of God Almighty to do the will of the Lord. And we take authority over every power of hell that comes against our children, this church, and we bind them in Jesus' name. And, and see that little dog run down the road. Because he recognizes authority, just like you recognize when a cop's out there. Now, what is power? Power is, you put out your hand, the cop puts out his hand, and the car just shoo, by, and this is power. Whoosh, boom! Boom! That's power. Big difference in it. So you don't have to use the power unless they don't obey the authority. So you got your gun, your Bible, the sword. We have a sword. Remember, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Ha, miss. Yeah, shake your head. Fall off. All right, church. Just punch your weight in a few things there. All right, now, let's finish reading this. <clears throat> when we don't realize who we are in Christ, our faith will be crippled. If you don't feel worthy to exercise your authority in Christ. Now, <clears throat> now this worthy bit has got to go. We've got to stop thinking about, well, I'm not worthy. God made us worthy. You've got to know you're worthy because he made you worthy. We are soldiers of the Lord. Notice what it says. Then you, will, <clears throat> then you won't be doing it in the fullness of faith. Notice what it says. And we'll lack assurance. Satan works diligently to program people's minds to feel unworthy. And unable to walk in the power of God here on earth. Notice what it says. This is one of the most popular strongholds in existence today in the body of Christ. The truth is that we, by our own power and effort, are worthless. We know that within ourselves. But it is the blood of Christ that makes us worthy. And, we, and if we say we are unworthy when the blood says we are, then we are denying the work that Christ did for us on the cross. Somebody say, ouch! How many's been guilty? I have, yeah. But no more. Push that aside. I'm not talking about being it on the stick. We walk in humility. We walk in humbleness. But we walk in power and authority. Because we know that our battle is not with what? Flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. So they recognize when a person has the authority of Christ and when the Word of God is working in us, we can step out and fight the good fight of faith. Now, I want to, um, let's finish that. Where would I break off at that? All right, here we go. Look at that, look at that scripture up there. It did not benefit because it was not mixed with faith, which is Leaning, in which I said that. And confidence in his power. Do we have confidence in his power? In his wisdom? In his goodness? By those who heard it, neither were they united in faith. Boy, when we get united in faith, I want you to hear me now. Half the church thinking about ice cream, the other half thinking about cake. Two or three people United in faith. All of us united in faith. In unity. How many of you know God's, well, God sees the unity. And what pleases God? Faith. 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 God has given us all a measure of faith. 
And when we exercise our faith in unity, read Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about one body, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father. Come into that oneness. In the spirit realm, demons will flee, sickness will go, and faith will rise. We need to remember that God gives us all a measure of faith, but there is what we call the gift of faith. Years ago, I had a call from one of the members of the Shield of Faith Church and said that <clears throat> their nephew had an accident on a motorcycle. And he went tumbling down the road. Have you ever seen anybody tumble down one of these roads with the tar? I mean, that highway is rough. Just scoop it up with your hand. Just reach it. It's rough. Well, he went all the way down there, rolled down. He was a mess. They had him at the hospital downtown. They called me, would I go down there? So I got in the car, was by myself, the Lord and me. We drove down there. But as we were driving down there, the gift of faith hit me. And I knew that all is well. I knew that the boy wasn't going to die. I hadn't even seen him. I went down there, went upstairs to the visiting room, and I met his father. And he, I mean, he was pale. And I said to him, and I hadn't even seen the boy, I said, he ain't going to die, he's going to live. Now this ain't presumption. This is God's faith working in a man. And I spoke boldly, and I said, he will not die, but he will live. And where is he? They're just bringing him in down there. They had just brought him in the room. The doctors and nurses are around trying to get his clothes off. All that tar, that root. I mean, it was just a mess, blood, everything. So I went down there. Someone says, the preacher's here. They all backed up. I went right in and I saw him. Didn't bother me at all. I had the gift of faith operating. I said, you will not die. You will live in the name of Jesus. When you read the scriptures, you'll find out that the disciples, the only, I think there's only one place in the scriptures that, that they prayed for healing, and that is in James. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil. And if he's done any sinning, one thing, he'll be forgiven and he'll be healed. All the other places they commanded. Remember the man at the gate? Peter and John came to the man at the gate. Silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Took the guy by the hand. Boom! Strength went into the man's leg. He got up. He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and <laughs> praising God. He just commanded, rise up and walk. Be healed in the name of Jesus. So we're going to have to learn to change some of our ways of praying for people. <clears throat> Do you know who you are in Christ? Are you still timid? Are you still fearful? Behave, Bob, I am. I'm trying to get you to be strong in the Lord. Because you ain't going to do nothing but let the devil run shotgun over your life. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Man. Say, I'm bold. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So you've got to start thinking about not unworthiness, but thinking about how God made us worthy through the life-giving blood of Jesus Christ. How God has, has, has commissioned us as a church, as believers. We know who we are. We know why we're on this earth. We're not just drifters, vagabonds. We're the church, the body of Christ. And Christ is the head of the church. Paul lays that out very good in the book of Ephesians, starting with verse uh, chapter uh, 4. Now, everybody say, I got, I got authority. 
And where did you get it? From Jesus, from God. God gave us authority, but we have to exercise that authority. <coughs> How many is hungry, you know, and they, and, and they fix this big meal, and you're so timid that you don't want to go up to the table and put any food on your plate. Anybody in here timid like that? <laughs> you run over to the pastor to get to the food. You're, you're as bold as a lion. <laughs> Yeah, you see, you've got to get your mind renewed. How are we going to be transformed? By the renewing of our foot. <laughs> By the renewing of our mind. Well, we can sit there and complacently, you know, I've heard that message before, you know. Yeah, but it's time to exercise. Put faith with it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, now look at your pamphlet. Look at down at the bottom there. Remember, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall shut, you, shall shut you free. I mean, make you free. But what is the condition? Somebody tell me the condition. Hmm? If we are continuously abide in the Word. All right. All right, now notice what it says. The opposite of truth is deception or false belief. And will cause you to live in bondage unnecessarily. This subject is no exception. If you see yourself as a failure, you will not be able to boldly exercise your authority in Christ because you will feel unworthy. Now identify with this now. You know, we're not fussing, we're not condemning. But we've got to identify what our problem is that we cannot enjoy life and, and walk in authority. And take authority over the enemy when we know he's attacked in our family. We've got to know. And we won't be living a defeated life. All right, look what it says now. You will not be able to boldly exercise your authority in Christ because you will feel unworthy. Even after the blood of Christ has made you worthy. How many remembers Acts 10... When Peter was up on the housetop and Cornelius, which was a Gentile, got that vision of the angel coming down and, and uh, told Cornelius about Peter to go get him and he would preach the gospel to him. So Peter's up there waiting for dinner. <laughs> And then the Lord shows up. <laughs> this sheet comes down. And you see it, four corners, sheet comes down. All these unclean animals. The Lord spoke to Peter, says, kill and eat. <clears throat> Not so, Lord, I don't touch any of the unclean things. And God rebuked him. Say, Peter, don't you call what I have cleansed. Now let's identify with that. Somewhere along, we've all done it, I'm chief on that. Don't call yourself unclean when God has cleansed you by the, the blood of His Son. Now you stop that. You hear me? Amen. Right now, stop it. Amen. That's a friendly rebuke. Because I love you. Because I know what we can be when we're strong in God. Thank you. Oh no, Lord, I couldn't touch that. I'm not touching the unclean. How many knows what the Lord was telling Peter? How many's got the revelation of that? No, see, see what the Lord has cleansed is holy. Amen. You remember when Moses was there at, at, uh, and, and, and the bush was on fire? And God says, take off your sandals, Moses. The ground is holy. This ground is holy. This, this ground, this, this, this is the sanctuary of God. God lives in this sanctuary. Oh, let that graft into you. You're walking around with God inside of you. Woo! Where's the devil? Don't you worry, he'll show up probably when you're not expecting him. 
So God rebuked Peter. Peter, quit calling that which I the blood has cleansed you and made you holy. And if you're thinking that you're not, what will we call that? Unbelief? Could be unbelief. And I'm scolding myself because I done it. How many's done it? Confession is good for the soul, but I know more. See, the unworthiness, see, that unworthiness will drive you and, and just compel you. Oh, oh no, I, I, could, I couldn't pray. I'm not holy enough to pray. What do you mean you're not? You're the temple of God. If God has made you holy, why are we arguing with God, church? Amen. Remember, this tape goes out. Why are we arguing with, you? with God? If God has made you holy, then you are. I didn't hear you. If God has made you holy, then you are. That's right. That's simple. That ain't complicated. But if we don't receive it, we'll stay in that defeated mode. And the church is weakened. And we can't. Live victorious. Wow. Praise you, Bob. Believe it well. <laughs> All right, now, <clears throat> let's get started here. I want to turn to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians, let's see where we're going to start here. Uh, chapter 2. All right, start with verse 1. Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 1. All right. And you, who, who's that? Raise your hand if that's you. He made alive. God's not dead. He's alive. Bob's not dead. He's alive. You're not dead. You're alive because he made you alive. Quit arguing with God. He didn't have you to vote on it. The council didn't vote on it. Pastor didn't, and the deacons didn't, the elders didn't. He decided years ago before we were even on this planet that you're going to be his child and you're going to be holy because you have a holy father. And he's imparted his holiness into you. And now you're holy with his holiness. He that knew no sin became sin with our sin and we became holy and righteous with his righteousness and with his holiness. It was imparted to us a free gift. Now, when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins, that's when he did it. When you were all in your sinning, he made you holy. Why you were sinning? Next verse, we've got to move fast. In which at one time you walked. At one time we walked happily. You were following the, the course and the fashion of this world. Were under the sway of the tendency of this present age. Following the prince of the power of the air. Which is Satan himself. You were obedient and under the control of the demon spirit that will that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience that's the lost people the the careless of the rebellion the unbelieving who go against the purposes of god that's like we were but now i want you to go down to verse four. Oh, this is going to be good now are you ready that's one time but god say it, but god so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful intense love which we, he loved us. Do you remember when we were all young? 
that first love. Do you, do you remember when you met your, your husband? Charles, you and Rachel remember how you couldn't sleep at night? You just thought of Rachel, all that intense love. Uh, uh, Rachel, did you have that intense love? Uh, yeah, she had that. Uh, 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 come on, I'm stirring your mind. Rick, did you have that intense love for Missy? Huh? It was, uh, you had to get that satisfied. How'd you get it satisfied? What do you say? I got to marry that woman, right? I got to live with that woman. I got to see how she cooks eggs and bacon. See, you get all excited going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. See, there's life in God, and you got to remember the things that used to stir your heart, and, and God ought to stir our heart that way. Oh, I couldn't wait to get to church tonight. Could you? A lot of this old boy. I've been around a long time. I know the struggles of life. Now let's get into the Word of God. Next verse. Come on. This is good stuff here now. This is what God has done. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, He, God, made us alive together in fellowship with Him and with one another and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ. See, I got the life of Christ. See, that's the resurrected life of Christ. The law of the Spirit of life, life in Christ Jesus, has set us free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2. All right, look at this now. He gave us the very life of Christ. Resurrected life. When Christ was resurrected, we were resurrected with Him. When Christ ascended, we are ascended with Him. Christ sat at the right hand side of the Father. Well, we're sons and daughters. We're seated at the right hand side of the Father. God loves us just as much as He loves Jesus. Yes, Let that soak in. Am I preaching gospel? Yes, Somebody throw a rock at me if I'm not. Oh, that's just a little. No, no, you, you got to believe it. Say, say, it's God's word. Remember, we talked about it's not the mere word of man, but it is the very word of the living God. Our heavenly Father has said we are his children. We have power over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt us. Amen. Now, look what the word of the Lord says. He gave us, 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 he gave us life. He is here tonight. He is here tonight. He lives in me and he lives in you. He's here tonight. That's what we sang. Sang about it. That's what we sung. What did we sing? Himself, the same new life with which he quickened him. That is Christ. When Christ had died the same Spirit, the Holy Ghost, quickened, and that same Spirit that quickened Jesus Christ has quickened us. Him himself, the same new life with which he quickened him, Christ, for it is by grace, his favor, his mercy, and mercy, which you did not deserve. We know that. I mean, we've talked about that enough. I think it's time to talk, talk about the resurrection. Talk about the new life. The new life we have in Christ. What God has given to us as his ch children. We have an inheritance. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. This is what we got to focus on. And let the Holy Spirit make it alive to us. Justine, come down from that ceiling right now. Quit walking across that wall there. <laughs> All right. He quickened us. He quickened us. He qu we were dead. We were slain. We were not trespasses. We weren't nothing. He comes along to satisfy his intense love. Rise from the dead. Come over here, my child. You belong to me from the foundation of the world. I have chosen you to be my child. Yes. Now, either God 
Well, I'm going to say it this way. God is not a man that he should lie. I know I don't have to yell, but I hope we're having a good time here. <laughs> All right, look at it. His favor and mercy, which you did not deserve. We understand that, yes, Lord, that you are saved. We didn't deserve it. But he loved us so deeply. I love when you go through the scriptures. You'll see, and God loved us, and God loved us. And God loved us, and God loved us. God loves you. I right, looked at it. We've got to move fast. Time is going by so fast that I hadn't got started yet. Notice this, that you are saved, delivered from judgment. Amen. Amen. Don't tell me we're going to be here when the judgment of God comes upon the ungodly. We've been already delivered from that judgment. Are you here? We, we have not been appointed to wrath. We've been appointed to salvation. Look at that scripture. That you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Amen. He is our salvation. And we have been made partakers of that salvation in Christ Jesus. What a gospel we preach. Go to the next verse. Man, this is getting good. I'm getting excited here. Get all excited. Going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs> all right, go to the next verse. And he raised us up. Who in the world is us? That's you and me. He raised us up together. You and I will stay together. With him and made us set down together, giving us joint seating. Joint seating. Do we understand what that is? Christ is seated at the right hand side of the Father. And who else is seated there at the right hand side of the Father? Say me. You didn't do it. You didn't deserve it. I didn't do it. I didn't deserve it. That ain't got nothing to do with it. God chose us before the foundation of the world that we would be his children. And he paved the way. And he sent his son to die that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Now look what it says. Seated with him in the heavenly spirit. Where are you seated right now? Right up there. That's where, see, that's your seat of authority. Listen to me. The president has an uh, office in Washington. But he can be over there in Europe. But that authority of that seat as president goes with him. He may be over there, but he's seated in that seat of authority. It's been given to him. And he can operate over there, even though he's... 10,000 miles away, he can take that same authority over there and, you, and, and alert our armed forces to do whatever needs to be done. But he's way over there. But his seat of authority is in Washington. How many understand what I'm saying? Even though we're down here, our seat of authority is up there. And that authority that we have because we're seated there with Christ is right here, right now on this earth. And God expects us to take that authority and let this flesh go to the cross and die, get it over with, and get on serving God. Are you fussing? No, I'm just excited. Get all excited, going to tell everybody that. I didn't hear nobody. Get all excited, going to tell everybody that. Jesus Christ is Lord. All right, you're, you're moving. <laughs> all right, church. Woo! Hallelujah. Look what it says. By virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Just accept it. Just believe it. Walk out here tonight. Your mind completely being renewed tonight. 
And that's how we're transformed. You go back to work tomorrow. You walk in cheapest shine. You walk in there. Not proud. Humble. But you know who you are. You're not a speck on the wall. You're a daughter and a son of the living God. And he made you. That. Every time something happens, we don't, oh, uh, 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 I've been there. Uh, pray for me. Uh, I'm not making fun. I needed that prayer. This last week, we had a real challenge. Our refrigerator went out, had to buy another refrigerator. And then the, the, the ice maker, they didn't have it. It took two weeks to get that, and we got that. And then the water, the ice tastes real bad, you know. Then I had to go down to get one of those purifiers, and I just got that on uh, uh, this morning, you know. And uh, I said, honey, just shut up the problem. Daddy will take care of it. You just, you just smile at me, honey. Keep those vittles uh, uh, cooking, honey. That's all you got to do. I'll take care of all this stuff. She just, thank God she had a husband that did get all worked up and tear the house apart and going to leave and had enough of it, you know. Then my lot more went bad, you know, and I had to work on that. And I seen bruises on my arm where I'm fixing them out there sweating, you know, 82 years old, just sweating like an old bull. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? <laughs> See, my big brother, you know, I tell you, he's right there. You know who my big brother is, don't you? Same, you get to, your big brother, that's Jesus. Absolutely. Look what it says. Of, by the virtue of our being in Christ. See, I'm in Christ. How many ever seen a tank? One of these tanks, you have a big gun, you know, out there. You know, and you're inside that tank. And those bullets just can't hit you. They hit that tank, bounce off. You peep your head out there real quick, like put it back down. You safe in the tank. And if you mess with me, I put the big gun on you. <laughs> Fire one. <laughs> your history. See, so you got to see yourself in Christ. Oh, death, where's thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? People worried about dying. My goodness, I can't hardly wait. Can you? <laughs> We just got a bill from the hospital. Susan was in the hospitals that, you know, we pay, we pay Blue Shield and Blue Cross or Blue Cross or Blue Shield, whatever you call it. Uh, we have the uh, other stuff. We have all these insurances. We pay thousands of dollars. And they had the nerve to send us a bill for $1,500. And when I got that bill, I said, my God supplies all my needs. Come on, Susan. Get with it, baby. Come on. I God supplies all our needs. Hallelujah. Oh, man, this is getting good, huh? Come on. Mm, mm, ah. mm, 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 mm. Ah, ah, ah. Woo! Ah, ah, ah. Just... Get excited, going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you got to change your thinking. Now think about all the things you used to sweat. Look, you're still here. God took care of it. Might have not turned out exactly like you like it, but this ain't all my life down here. This is just a little speck on the wall. And pretty soon we'll be out of here and we're going to get our glorified bodies and then we will. Ha, ba, boop, ba, boop, ba, ba. 
Boop, 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 boop. I could do better if I get rid of these shoes. <laughs> All right. Next verse. Come on, this is getting good, man. We got to move here now. Oh, got 10 more minutes. How to move fast. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace. His unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart towards you and me in Christ Jesus. Just accept it. That's it. Yeah, but I'm not worthy. Oh, I don't want to hear that again. Ain't got nothing to do with your unworthiness. It has everything to do with his goodness, his immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace. Just suck it in. Yeah, go ahead. Just suck it in. The war's over. Look. His kindness, his goodness of heart towards us. Have you ever uh, met somebody and you said, he's, that person's got a good heart? How many ever you know what I'm talking about? Your heavenly father's got a good heart. He's not holding anything against us. I, I said, he is not holding, listen, he's not holding anything against us. That's what reconciliation is. He's rec he reconciled us. He reconciled us. While we were sinners. And here we are, his children today. And we have a great future. We have everything we need down here to live victorious. He's given us his righteousness, his holiness. He's given us his power, authority. And we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Next verse. Boy, this is getting good. Oh, come on. See, look, we're talking about the resurrection side here tonight. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. For it is by free, free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved. Now notice this. There it is again. Delivered from judgment. Oh, yeah, now, don't get me wrong. At... <coughs> At the judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged, not whether we're saved or not saved. Oh, no, that's taken care of before we leave earth. But we'll be judged according to the works that we do and be rewarded accordingly. Our motives, our purposes of doing what we're doing, he will check it out and see if they're the right motives and all, and we'll get the proper rewards. Some things we probably won't get rewards for because we did it maybe through selfishness or something but as we've grown in the Lord we we get rid of that stuff and we do it because we love the Lord look what it says and made partakers of Christ's salvation made partakers of Christ's salvation through your what through your bank account through what Faith. Mm. See, I heard that somewhere before. Faith. Mm. How do you please God? Faith. faith. Through your faith, and this salvation is not your of yourselves. But I've been such a good boy. No, I'll just tell it like it is. You like the rest of us. Just you were, but now you are. Christ-like, sons and daughters of the living God. No more slaves in Galatians, but sons and daughters, seed of Abraham. Of, not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, uh, but we, we gave it a good try, didn't we? Huh? How many of you remember your, your striving days? Huh? You, you remember that? Huh? 
Come on, I'll tell it like it is. I've been to remember the striving days. Uh-huh. And God's up there saying, man, just, just receive what I've already done. Just, just receive it. But you see, our feelings were just so negative. The strongholds were so strong, we had to get rid of all that. And then we realized, hey, God loves me. There's one thing I'm convinced of, God loves me. I've combed those scriptures for years, 50-some years, faithful. and re- I've read this. I've quoted this. I've preached this. I've, I've read it in, in, in NIV, the, new, the, old, uh, the old King James, the New King James, the Living Bible, the Amplified Bible, uh, the, the Bible. <laughs> God loves us. And you don't have to try to make him. You ever try to make anybody love you? I know some couples like that. Just love one another. Just love up on one another. I mean, I'm a lover myself. I don't argue with Susan. I just love her. Mm. Some of you ain't had no mm in a long time, have you? <laughs> I'm 82 years old, and I said like that. Mm, yum, 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 yum. I'm not being ugly. I'm just telling you the truth. I, get, I, get, I just look at her and get geese bumps. I, I do. Sometimes they turn to goosebumps. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Because, see, that's an intense love that's been birthed into me by the Holy Spirit. That's God's love and operation in this vessel. I love you. I love you. For just you. Unconditional love. That's a shepherd, a good shepherd. A good shepherd gives his life for the flock. I've done that a many times. Look what it says. Not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving in your bank account and how good looking you are and how gifted you are, but it is the gift of God. Amen. Just receive it. Just the gift of God. Well, Bob, don't we have to do anything? Yeah, we got to do something. Got to praise him. (laughs) Just praise him. Uh, Four more minutes. I haven't got started yet. All right, let's move real quick. Next verse. Not because of works, not the fulfillment of the law. God did us a favor. The law is still there, but we died to the law. We're married to Christ. Romans 7, 4, 5, 6, right in there. Of the law's demands. Are you still trying to keep the law's commands? Let me tell you a little secret. Just walk in the Spirit. Just walk in love. And the result of that will be you won't trespass God's laws. Simple, not complicated. Because, see, the law has been written into your heart now. Not on tablets anymore, not on paper no more, but on your heart. God wrote it in your heart, you know. If I do something that's not right, and let's say I sinned, the sin don't bother me as much as the hurt I feel that I disappointed my Father in heaven. How many understand that? That's good. But I thank God for First John 1, 9, that if I do, and if I do, and if I confess it, God is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, if you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, after you have confessed and God has cleansed you from all unrighteousness, what unrighteousness do you have? But as long as you think that in your mind, you're going to act that out in your everyday experience in life. No joy, no real life, just miserable, because so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. But when you begin to think of what the Lord has done, man, New life comes in. Look what it says. 
The laws demand lest any man should boast. We have nothing to boast about, but everything to praise him for. And you'll find that also in 1 Corinthians. We don't have time to turn there. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do. So no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. So what do we do? Just give him glory. Just worship him, love him, thank him, and receive and walk in the truth that he's done for us. Next, real quick, like, got one minute. Got to get this next verse in. For we are God's own handiwork. Woo! His workmanship. Recreated. Everybody say recreated. In Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking par- uh, paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. The good life. And when you know who you are in Christ and what Christ has done for you, When we know that, not just by mere words of men, but we hear it from God's own voice. You are my son. You are my daughter. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. If God is for you, who can be against you? And if God is for you, who do you care that's against you? For you cannot lose. Because the God that created all things, and we have been created for his pleasure, will never desert us. And will stay with us and take us home when the proper time comes. So until then, you walk as God's children, knowing who you are and what the Lord has done for you. And watch the devil have a nervous breakdown. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that rests on each and every one of us. That these words that were spoken tonight was not words of Bob Tilton, but they were words of the living God. And they have power, and I thank you, Father, as the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that our heart, the eyes of our heart has been illuminated to see and understand and absorb and grasp what the Lord has done. In his holy name we pray, amen. Any questions? How many have?